Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So I'm here today with another collection update, this time for the month of August 2021. So uh, typically you guys know, uh, if you follow the channel, that I will do a couple different collection updates each month. The first one is typically my book haul for the month, and then the second one is everything else. So it'll be my movie haul, plus any collectibles, if I happen to have gotten them. If I have any video games, they would be in there as well. So uh, that's how I typically run things. But because August was a little different, I ended up only grabbing three different books in August. Of course, this is outside of like the festival book haul. Uh, and these are movies outside of the other hauls I've been posting this month. And I have another haul that's coming soon from a disc replay sale that went on last weekend. So uh, this is just basically everything else that's not in the other haul videos, of course. But I mention all of that because today's collection update is actually going to contain all of the books books that I ended up grabbing last month, the uh, movies I grabbed, as well as the collectibles that I ended up finding in the month of August. So I will do my best to leave timestamps down in the description. That way you can skip anything that you're not interested in, because I know some of you are interested in the books, some of you are interested in the movies, and some of you, hopefully, most of you are interested in everything, but it's just not the way it goes all the time. So uh, yeah, that's how we're going to run this month's video. Hopefully you guys are cool with that. Before we get into this, though, I do want to talk a little bit about my my budget. So I know I mentioned it in the July wrap up uh, where I talked about just how ridiculous a month July was. And so because of that, I decided, you know what, like let's figure out what I spend on average each week and then let's cut it in half. And so that's what I ended up doing. And uh, so August was the first month that that was in place. So basically I do it every two weeks because, you know, biweekly, that's my pay schedule. So it just makes sense to me. Um, and so there were, you know, two different schedule or two different chunks there, two different two week periods, I guess, in the month of August where this was in effect. And the first period I did really well. I only spent maybe like 60% of my budget. And then the next two week period I did well. I, I had like a few bucks to, to spare at the end of the, the period, but it was a lot more difficult because there was a lot more spending in the beginning. Thanks to like the Dollar Tree uh, movie wave hit. Uh, there was a sale at disc replay that I just mentioned. We had the festival book haul where I spent some money. Uh, the collectibles I'm going to show today. Uh, one of these was a new one. And so that kind of got me spending there. So yeah, it was just a little bit of a, a more difficult, a more trying two week period to stay within budget. But I'm very happy to say that I was able to do that, which means that for the month of August, I more than halved my spending. And if you compare it to July, it was even less than that. But we're not going to talk about July because it was absurd. But anyway, so I'm very happy with that. But uh, you guys can see like I've been posting haul videos. So it's not really having a major impact on the haul videos that you guys see simply because I tend to be a bargain shopper 90% of the time. So I spend very little when I go out, therefore I can buy a lot. And so you guys, you know, have been seeing a lot of haul videos this month as per usual. The only video it's really affecting is my everything else video or my collection update, which is what you're going to see here today. This is going to be a little bit uh, smaller than what you might normally expect. That said though, I still have some some really cool items to show you guys. So we're going to start off with the books. I'm going to move into the collectibles and then we will wrap it up with the movies today. So really excited to share with you guys everything that I ended up finding. Well, everything else I ended up finding in the month of August. If you guys enjoy this video, please give it a like down below. That really does help me out. But with that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to my August 2021 collection update. So the first two books I ended up grabbing were both from the Dollar Tree, which I don't know about you guys, but it has been like increasingly more difficult to find interesting books at Dollar Tree, at least over the last like month or two, I guess I'd say, because for whatever reason, they've just seemed to have cleared out their book section and not restocked it like they normally do. So when I found these, I was really excited because I just hadn't been seeing anything worthwhile lately. But uh, the first one here is Thor Crusade of the Forgotten, written by Pat Shand. So from what I can tell, from this. This looks to be a YA novel of sorts. Um, I don't really know much about it, but it was a Thor novel 
and the Dollar Tree. So of course I picked it up. Um, but I guess on this one, Loki is trying to find a weapon to compete with uh, Thor's hammer. Uh, but then he ends up unlocking this uh, like entity or this deity, whatever it was, that was locked in for like thousands of years. And now he needs Thor's help in order to uh, not have the world destroyed or Asgard destroyed by this creature. So it sounds interesting enough. Uh, and I think it's just cool because it is a, you know, obviously a comic book. So it's media tie-in. Uh, comic book novel. So it sounds interesting. I will check this out definitely at some point. So Thor, what is it? Crusade of the Forgotten written by Pat Shand, a really cool find from Dollar Tree. Longtime viewers of the channel will know that I love hard case crime books. I've not talked about one in a while just because I haven't found any recently. Well, the fact that I found this one from one of my favorite of the hard case crime series and a, a favorite author of mine, I was so excited. And it also happens to just be the next one I needed in this series. So this is Quarry's Cut, written by Max Allen Collins. So this is book four of the Quarry series, if I remember right. And it is has this amazing cover uh, painted by Robert McGinnis. I think he did all of them. You can see them on the back there. They are just gorgeous. And it's one of the main reasons I really love the Hard Case Crime books, because they look amazing. So this was such a cool find. I haven't thought about Quarry in maybe a year now, because I think I read the second book last year, early last year. Really enjoyed it. I need to continue it. I just haven't done so yet. Uh, and so I do have the next one in the series, uh, which I frankly, I don't remember which one it is. I guess it would be Quarry's Deal, what I'm guessing is what number four is. So maybe this is number... F no, I don't know. I don't remember what number this is. But uh, either way, this was the next one I needed. I'm fairly certain this is the fourth one in the series. And so now I have three and four so I can continue on. Uh, I would love to have all of these. I want to say there's about a dozen because he stopped writing them for a long time and then picked it up again once the, uh, I think it was around the time that the, whatever it was, Showtime show started or I don't know what channel it was on, I guess, but it, there was a, oh, there it is, Cinemax. It, when the Cinemax TV series started. He picked them up again. So yeah, I don't know. This has been a really good series. It is, uh, Quarry is our main character. He's basically a hitman who uh, gets into weird situations. Um, the uh, second book was him kind of falling for somebody and it was an interesting story there. So I really enjoyed what I've read of this series and cannot wait to continue it. And now I just happened to have found uh, the fourth book in the series. So that's really cool. Quarry's cut by Max Allen. Alan Collins, one of my favorite books I found this entire month. The last book I ended up finding is actually a graphic novel, and I found this one at Ollie's, so you know it was cheap, which is always good for me. Um, but this is actually a Marvel graphic novel, and I've, I've mentioned in my book hauls in the past, like a couple months now, that I am subscribed to Marvel Unlimited, so I've not been buying a lot of Marvel graphic novels, but you'll see why I had to pick this one up. This is Man-Thing, and it's written by none other than then R.L. Stein, who is, of course, one of my favorites of all time. He, you know, the author of Goosebumps, Fear Street, the list goes on and on. I love R.L. Stein. I talk about him all the time. I'm sure you know who he is. But yeah, so apparently he wrote five issues of Man Thing for Marvel. And that is just fascinating to me. So of course I had to grab this one. I, it's, it's super thin. It's five issues, but boy, is it a thin set, uh, a thin volume here. So it's not a volume one. It like doesn't say volume one on the side anywhere. So I, this may have just been a one shot. I, I don't really know, um, but this just looked amazing. And so I had to grab it. I've actually heard kind of negative things about this run, but that's okay. It's R.L. Stein and it's a graphic novel. Of course, I had to check it out. And I've been really wanting to check out Man Thing. I know there is this terrible movie. Uh, I think it's only on DVD, but it's Man Thing. And I, it's just supposed to be very bad, but I still want to get it. I know I had it on my in my eBay card at one point because I want the movie. And so I'm just trying to find a good price for it. But anyway, that's not really related to this. It just happens to be the same character. So R.L. Stein's Man Thing, and this is called Those Who Know Fear. So very excited to get to this one. I will probably be doing this one very soon. So that is the last book I ended up grabbing or graphic novel in this case. So now let's jump over to the collectibles I picked up. You guys know that I've been picking up a bunch of the Toonie Terrors lately. That's kind of been what I've been grabbing this year and I've been neglecting my Funko purchases. Well, this month I more than made up for it. I ended up finding four that I just had to pick up. Well, three that I needed and one that my wife needed. This one was actually one that my wife asked me to grab. Um, I had a box lunch gift card, so we ended up using that towards this one and the next one I'm going to show. But um, this is Wardrobe from Beauty and the Beast. And this one looks pretty cool. But what I like most about it is that it is hefty. It is, it is heavy, 
packaging, which just makes me feel like I'm getting a better deal. I'm getting something that's worth more because it's heavier, which I know is ridiculous, but that's always how I feel about it. So yeah, it was, this one's pretty cool. You can see the other ones available in this line. I don't think we'll end up grabbing more of these. This one is going to go not with all mine down here. This will go upstairs in our bedroom because like I said, this really was for my wife, but I wanted to show it because it was a new Funko for the collection. So the first one I grabbed from Box Lunch is actually a 2021 Summer Convention Limited Edition Funko Pop from Beauty and the Beast. It's Wardrobe. I don't know if it's set up this way everywhere, but at uh, the box lunch at my mall, they actually have their, you know, their inside store and then they have a little kiosk right outside of it. So I went inside. I couldn't really find anything in terms of the Funko Pops. And then I went outside and I happened to look around there. That's where we found wardrobe, but it's also where we found this gem. This is John Nada from They Live. And this is stinking awesome. This, of course, is Rowdy, Roddy Piper, one of my all time favorites. Uh, yeah, this is just a fantastic figure. I was so happy that I found this. If I can find the uh, the alien, I will definitely grab that at some point. But yeah, this was such a cool find. I didn't know they had these ones. They didn't have it in the inside. It was just a random one they had outside. So I was so happy to find this because I was trying to figure out like, what am I going to spend my gift card on? Like Box Lunch has been lowering the amount of Funko Pops they've had, at least the one I typically go to. And so that was a little disappointing. But then I walked out and I saw this. So I was like, yes, I can use my gift card and I am very happy to do so. So from They Live, this is John Nada, just an awesome Funko for the collection. So happy to find this one. The final two Funkos are actually both Hot Topic exclusives. So if you know, like Box Lunch and Hot Topic are the same company, but annoyingly, you cannot use a Box Lunch gift card at Hot Topic. So I had to find something from Hot Topic or rather from Box Lunch when there were already a couple things I needed from Hot Topic. But uh, the second one I grabbed because these were both buy one, get one half off when I went in there. So I went in with the intention of finding the next one I'm going to show you or the last one I'm going to show you, um, but it was buy one, get one half off. So I had to find something else. Well, I, I was looking through that I wasn't really finding anything but then I looked down and what do we have this amazing pop figure this is from Zack Snyder's Justice League this is Superman you can see it is amazing I love this thing I think it looks so cool just an awesome pose I love the outfit he's in there like this is just awesome you can see some of the other ones there as well just a really cool figure just to show his pose off there so I was thrilled when I found this because I wasn't I was gonna grab something just to grab it but then I found this and I was so excited because I was like yes this is one of my favorite favorite Funkos in my collection. Now, I don't know what it is about it. Just the coloring on it looks cool. The pose. It's my only Superman in my collection, which I'm really excited about. So this was an awesome find. Very happy to add the Superman from Zack Snyder's Justice League, which, as I mentioned in my like Lifetime of Films video, has been my favorite film that I've watched from 21 2021 so far. And I cannot wait. The uh, 4K is coming out next week. So very excited to grab that. But anyway, Zack Snyder's Justice League Superman, a Hot Topic exclusive. And finally, the last Funko Pop I ended up grabbing, the last collectible for this month, is the reason I ended up going into Hot Topic in the first place. This is from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We have Leatherface, another Hot Topic exclusive. So this thing looks fantastic. It just looks so dirty on the apron and everything. The mat ad is just beautiful. And as you probably know from me uh, talking about it on the channel, I did just read the uh, Gunnar Hansen uh, making of book of Leather or of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And it was excellent. I loved it. I watched the movie. It's just so iconic and excellent. I just, I love the movie. And so, of course, I had to grab this one when I saw it was coming. Um, the only one I've missed out on that I forgot to go to Hot Topic for was Sam from Trick or Treat. Uh, that one came out maybe two or three weeks before this. And I just it completely escaped me to go check it out. I can buy it online, but then I have to pay for shipping. And that's just not nearly as fun. So I unfortunately probably won't be getting that one. But yeah, Leatherface, I didn't forget about. I had to go in the day it came out. or Actually, I think it was the day after it came out. But uh, they had a ton of them there. So I was very happy. So yeah, the last collectible I grabbed this month is Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre and you can't go wrong with Leatherface just an awesome pickup all right, so now let's move over to the movies I grabbed, and we'll start with the DVDs. So first up here are, actually, there's three I grabbed from, where was it? Second and Charles. They were all in the clearance bin for a buck at Second and Charles. The first one is Aliens in the Attic. And so this is a movie that I've not seen before, but it looks like a lot of fun, and it has this amazing green case that I've always seen in the past and wanted to add to the collection. So yeah, this is going to be something like Small Soldiers, I think, or it's going to give that vibe, maybe like a mix of that and uh, Gremlins, maybe, is kind of what I'm 
getting from looking at the box and reading the description. So yeah, it just sounds fun. I'm sure it'll be goofy and uh, you know good for families, which is fine by me. So Aliens in the Attic is the first DVD I ended up finding. This next movie I knew existed, but like I never did any research into it to know what it was about or who was in it. But man, this just has an amazing cast. This is called Trapped from 2003. We have Kevin Bacon in this, Stuart Townsend, Courtney Love, and Charlize Theron. Like that is fantastic. And it sounds really cool because I guess the daughter is kidnapped uh, and the uh, wealthy family basically has 24 hours to pay the ransom. And so it sounds really good. It looks like it's going to be kind of one of those like I don't know sexy thrillers I guess it just it looks awesome so very excited to check this one out trapped from 2003 I'm really glad I ended up picking this one up because it looks fantastic the last one I ended up finding from the clearance section at Second and Charles just looks like a ton of fun. It looks like the movie Speed, but done on a train. And so, and it has Jean-Claude Van Damme in it, so you know it's going to be fun. But this is Derailed from 2002. And like I said, it's uh, basically they are trying to stop this uh, group of terrorists who have taken a train hostage that has this uh, weapon on it. And so, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a blast. I cannot wait to check it out. And it has Van Damme, who, frankly, I have not spent nearly enough time with in my life, so I I need to check out some more of his movies. So Derailed from 2002 is the last uh, like clearance DVD I grabbed. But I did end up picking a couple of random things up brand new from Walmart. Uh, the first one here is a $4 DVD, which is just ridiculous. This is actually available on Scream Factory on Blu-ray, but it's not $4 that way. So uh, this is King Kong, and this is the 1976 version. So this one has uh, Jeff Bridges, Jessica Lange, and Charles Gordon in it. Uh, Grodin, excuse me, Charles Grodin in it. Um, so this one is actually, as you can see down here, the 134 minute cut. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is the theatrical length of this one where the TV cut is like two, like three hours, I think. It's really long. Um, and that one is available on the Scream Factory Blu-ray. So not saying that this is the way to go over that, of course. It's just this was $4. And so I picked it up to see if I'd like it or not. So yeah, this one should be uh, fun. I've never seen it before, but it looks like a good time. My buddy watched it recently. And he said, yeah, it, it's a King Kong movie. So yeah, you, you basically get what you're expecting with this movie. So that's going to be fine. King Kong from 1976, a super cheap DVD that I couldn't pass up at Walmart. Speaking of super cheap DVDs from Walmart, I did find the Friday three movie collection. This is only $5. And so that's perfectly fine for me. I don't need these in like, you know, 4k or anything. Uh, this is totally sufficient. So this is Friday, next Friday, and then Friday after next. They do come on, uh, two DVDs as opposed to three, but I think that's going to be fine. I'm not too worried about it. So yeah, these are uh, movies that I've uh, have always been interested in seeing, but I've only seen the first one. And the first one was hilarious. I laughed so hard at that one. And I only watched it maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago, not a long time ago, but I loved it. So now I have all three of them in the collection and I can get to the next two. So yeah, really excited to check out the three of the four, because I think there's a fourth one of this as well that just came out a couple years ago, but uh, excited to check out three of the four Friday movies. Moving over to Blu-rays, the first one I ended up grabbing was Till Death with Megan Fox. And I have a full review of this one here on the channel. If you're interested, definitely check it out. My full thoughts on this because I thought this one was pretty darn interesting. So I'll leave it there. Check out my review if you want to know more. But Till Death with Megan Fox. This next item I ended up grabbing off of eBay and it was like the first negative feedback I have left on eBay and probably ever. Um, but I was really disappointed because... It first off, it took the entire month of August to get here. I ordered this on either the first or the second of the month, and it didn't arrive at my door until the last day of August, which is just absurd. To be fair, it was coming from Alaska, so I can't really blame the shipper for that. But I can blame the seller on the fact that they knew it was coming thousands of miles across the country, and they didn't even put it in a bubble mailer like they couldn't even be bothered enough to put it in a bubble mailer. They put it in what was essentially wrapping paper like it came across the country in wrapping paper so of course the uh the case is a little messed up the dvd on it is not playable which am i gonna watch the dvd i'm not uh so it is what it is but i'm just disappointed that you don't have the foresight to at least put it in bubble wrap when you're shipping across the country so i tried reaching out to them to talk about it they didn't reply so they got the negative feedback and it is what it is um but the blu-ray is playable and that's what matters i can replace the case and it'll be fine so anyway this is escape room 
Room. And this is a horror movie that I have been wanting to see for a while now, but I couldn't find it for a good price. Finally, I decided, let's check eBay, see what they have. And I got it for about half the price I would have. No, maybe two thirds of the price I would have if I bought it in store after shipping. So uh, that's not terrible. I, you know, I paid a good price for it. So that's good. And the worst thing I need to do is replace the Blu-ray uh, case itself because it was crushed. Um, but the DVD is unplayable. So it's not in very good condition like it was sold to me. So I, I was just disappointed in that, which is why I ended up leaving the negative feedback, which I hate to do. But hey, you know, if you give you if I give you a chance to reply and you just ignore me for, you know, five days or whatever it is, then there's only so much I can do. So anyway, that story aside, I now have escape room in the collection. So that's really cool. These next two I ended up finding uh, used at Disc Replay, and I was really excited to find this first one. This is Booksmart. So this is a uh, like coming-of-age comedy that's supposed to be really good. Um, I believe this one I heard about from Beth over at Movie Buff Pains. She talked about it, and it's one of her favorites. Uh, I think she actually has the poster up on her wall in some of her videos. So yeah, I really was looking forward to checking this one out. It's supposed to be hysterical. So I typically, like, typically enjoy movies like this, so really intrigued to check this one out. Very happy to find it for so cheap. So Booksmart, and this one was released when, I feel like just a couple of years ago, I want to say 2019, yeah, 2019 is when this one came out. So should be a lot of fun when I get around to this one. And the second one I found from Disc Replay is one that I've been meaning to pick up for quite a while. This is from 2013. This is Captain Phillips with Tom Hanks. So this is one that has been on my list for a long time, and I just, for whatever reason, have always passed it by. But I found a, a very decent condition slipcover for it, so I said, hey... Now's the time. Let's grab it. Uh, and I just really want to see this movie. So that's the main reason I you know, decided now was the time because I'd been thinking about it recently. So yeah, this one should be really cool. It's basically about uh, this group of pirates who take this ship hostage, essentially. And so uh, it's supposed to be just an incredible movie uh, that I've heard a lot of great things about. So really excited to check out Captain Phillips from 2013. You guys knew this one would be in my pile because a new Vestron video movie came out. So I did pick up Sundown, The Vampire in Retreat. So I've heard mixed things about this since I picked it up. And honestly, this was one that if it wasn't so cheap, I wouldn't have picked it up because I'm not terribly interested in it. It's supposed to be a horror comedy, um, which I like, but I don't know. I just don't seek those out often, I guess. Um, but my one buddy really didn't love it all that much, but uh, I was watching Ken over at Mid-Level Media. He really enjoyed it, so I ended up keeping it because I didn't really feel like returning it anyway. Um, and it's cheap from Vestron. So, you know, I now have, what spine number is this? Spine number 21 is in my collection now. So again, like I said last month, if they keep coming out at this $13 or less price tag, then I'm going to keep buying them because that's a really good deal. So yeah, anyway, Vestron videos, spine number 21, Sundown, The Vampire in Retreat. Very intrigued to get to this one and see what my thoughts are. The sequel for this one just came out, I think it was last month or within the last couple of months here. So I've been really wanting to revisit this movie, which I only owned digitally. So I figured, you know what? I loved it when I saw it. Just pick up the physical physical version of it. This is Don't Breathe. So this, of course, uh, like I said, Don't Breathe 2 just came out. I'm hearing good things about that. But the first one I thoroughly enjoyed. I was kind of blown away by it. It just is one of those movies that makes you feel tense while you're watching it. It makes you it makes you want to hold your breath, like literally. It, it's just a fantastic movie about this uh, group of kids who are trying to break into this uh, man's house who is blind, uh, but of course he has an incredible sense of hearing. Um, and then kind of weird things happen from there. It is a very tense movie. Uh, it's just, it's a really well done film. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, so yeah, definitely excited to revisit this one. And then eventually I'll be able to see Don't Breathe 2, which I'm really looking forward to. So Don't Breathe, another one for the horror collection. The last movie I ended up picking up is a Scream Factory Collector's Edition of a movie that I was so excited to see was coming to Scream Factory. And I wanted it since it released, but it was just a little pricey and I'm cheap. And so I ended up waiting. Fortunately, it did go on sale uh, at Best Buy this past month. And then I had like a 10% off thing for my Best Buy card um, and then a $5 reward zone certificate. So I got this for a really good deal. I'm talking about Event Horizon from Paul Anderson. So this is essentially a haunted house film but done in space and it is so good it's so creepy uh the effects on this are incredible like just take a look at that cover art there really once you see it up close it's the detail in it that is just like incredible i love it um but anyway this is a movie that we talked about on the Cinefessions podcast many moons ago, um, and I really enjoyed it when I watched it for the first time, and so I'm definitely excited to revisit this because it was 
really well done. It's creepy. It's atmospheric. It's a combination of two of my favorite things in space and horror. Like those are just my favorites. So yeah, you know, I had to pick this one up and I'm so glad that it's now finally in my collection. So Event Horizon from Paul Anderson released by Scream Factory is the last item in this collection update. All right, so there it is. Everything else I grabbed in August. Just another really good month. And I'm so like just happy with myself that I was able to stay within my budget for the entire month. So I'm hoping that I do the same here for the month of September, but we'll see where things go. So let me know down in the comments below if you guys have read or seen any of these. Let me know what I should prioritize because you guys always give me great recs. So definitely leave those comments down below. I always appreciate that support. As always, if you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a like down below. That really does help me out. And like I always say, I don't just talk books or movies. I talk all things media, be it books, movies, collectibles, manga, graphic novels. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching. And I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time.